What is going on everyone? My name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Platinum and today's challenge will be can I beat Pokemon Platinum using only Honey Tree Pokemon? Now to explain what exactly this challenge is, there is a mechanic in Generation 4 that isn't really used ever again which uh, it kind of hurts my heart because it's, it's a fun mechanic but it's a very annoying mechanic. There is Honey Trees, these yellow trees in the game and you slather honey on them and over time uh, they will actually attract Pokemon to them. Now the problem is it takes forever and you can't actually skip time. It's actually in-game time like they use the real-time clock in it. So that's pretty annoying because you can't really skip around to it and there's also some rare Pokemon in the trees that are pretty good. Uh, the rarest Pokemon of all time, Munchlax, is in these trees. So I mean to start we don't have access to the honey tree at the beginning. I gave myself the liberty to start with the most honey tree Pokemon ever, which is Combi, uh, the actual honey tree Pokemon <laughs> that actually has a honey gathering ability that gives you honey throughout uh, your adventure. So that will be my starter and obviously I will be allowed to use HM slaves because all the Pokemon cannot learn all the necessary HMs to beat the game. So I mean that that is basically all the rules to uh, explain. I am allowed to use I mean, up to six Pokemon of the honey trees. All my Pokemon have to be from the honey trees. I can use HM slaves. Anyways, if you guys are excited for this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below some challenge ideas, and also subscribe if you guys are not already. So let's get into the challenge. Now to begin, I will be using Combi to, I mean, very, very poorly train up Combi uh, through the introduction of the game. And it's a, it's a painful, it's a painful ride. Obviously, we don't have access to the honey trees right now, so we're just going through the game with our, with our combi. And I realized that the first gym is a rock type gym leader, and we have a combi. Now, combi isn't the worst Pokemon, but it's just not the best Pokemon to fight against rock types. So I am going to be stuck in Orberg Mine to train up to level 21, to which it evolves at. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are rock types in Orberg Mine, so I decided to go out north of the route and, and fight against the Pokemon up there and they have some decent Pokemon up there uh, that will give us decent XP and we'll eventually get to level 21 with through a bit of grinding and then head into Orbrick City's first gym which is Rourke. Rourke is obviously the rock type gym leader of the game and he's gonna start out with a Geodude. I have a new move called a Powder Gym and also I have a lot of defense now because I'm a fully evolved Pokemon to begin with so the Geodude in here will actually get demolished very easily then the Onyx comes out Onyx will only set up Stealth Rocks, so Vespi Queen is ready to go just hit it with Power Gems. Two Power Gems will knock it out, and then the Craniodos comes out. Craniodos will actually get slaughtered by our Power Gem because it crits and knocks it out. So that is the first Gym Leader down, and we are done with that. And we have a fully evolved Vespi Queen, so that is our ace for now. Um, its strongest move is Gust and Power Gym. So, I mean, it's not too much you can really ask for. We're actually going to head into Fort Ormond Town where we have finally access to the honey tree mechanic of the game. And this guy will give us honey and we're going to splatter honey on both of these trees and then spend some time. And then we're going to be able to encounter the trees and there will be a Pokemon waiting for us in there. Our first Pokemon will be Apom. Apom is one of the Pokemon available to us in the honey trees. We're obviously, uh, if we attack it, we knock it out. So we're going to try our best to catch it. We have a lot of Pokemon in the back and eventually we actually end up catching the Apom and that will be on our team. And then we head back into the meadow and Apom is still there. So there is, um, you know, we have another Apom on our team. So we have to re-slather honey on both of these trees and then come back. And obviously that is a bit painful because why do we have two Apoms back to back? From there we're actually going to encounter a 1% Heracross in the trees, which, I mean, that's surprising. Heracross is one of the best Pokemon you can get from the trees. I, I argue the best Pokemon you could get from the trees. And the final Pokemon we're going to catch is a Warm Pole from the trees. Then we're going to go into the Valley Windworks and we're going to fight the mini boss of Morris and Perugly. Uh, Perugly actually gets, the, it just gets slaughtered by our Vespi Queen. So good for us. I mean, we have some monstrous Pokemon on our team. They're just kind of weak because they're all bug type. And this tree, we're going to encounter our fifth Pokemon of our team and our team's gonna look like this for a while because I do want to keep Turtwig as my HM slave. You can't go far in this game without HM slaves. So we're only going to have a five man team for a long time and two daily four essentially. Uh, then we'll have a six man team. But I mean we're gonna actually head into Turner Forest and then uh, just clear through it as fast as possible. We can get all the Pokemon we can. Uh, unfortunately uh, I'm not going to take my time to go find a Munchlax tree and then slather honey on it because that's going to take forever. 
and that's not that is not for me like I cannot do that once we get through Eternus City's forest we're gonna get the super we're gonna put that on our a pump and we're actually going to head into Eternus City's gym Eternus City's gym is a grass type and since Heracross naturally learns aerial lace uh, this is a freebie for us Heracross is going to have a field day we're gonna head into Gardena and Heracross is gonna start off the battle and knock out the turret tweak uh, her next Pokemon will be her Cherum uh, Cherum leech sees me so unfortunately it knocks me down to low HP and then uh, the Rose Ray will actually finish me off and then so I just send out my best queen to finish things off clear through it I mean best queen is just carrying the team on her back because she I mean she's pretty much she's pretty much the ace of the team so I can't complain from here we're gonna head into the second mini boss of the game which is Jupiter Jupiter will, will actually knock us out <laughs> unfortunately we actually lose Jupiter the first time uh, just she crits my Vespi Queen and we go down and nothing else can really live a hit second time we come around We actually beat it very easily because Ves Vespi Queen doesn't get crit and then from here I'm gonna decide to train up my a pom a bit more we we found out that our warm pole turns into a beautify and I mean I mean I, that is probably the better one of the two So I guess we're gonna use a beautify from there and we're gonna head into wayward cave we're gonna head into where we cave and get tm26 which is earthquake we're gonna put that on a heracross which is very useful heracross has some monstrous coverage now and we're gonna actually head into hard home city hard home city you know i this might sound dumb but this is how i'm training up apon hard home city has a ghost gym in it is fantina's gym and apon has a move called astonish <laughs> don't laugh at me astonish is a very good move it's a very a loose term of a good move. It's it's good in terms of uh, we could get some XP on an Apom finally and start grinding that thing up because I think this is gonna be a really good Pokemon. I actually really love Apom and Ambipom just from the sheer fact that I love them. <laughs> just they, they look cool. They attack hard too with Technician. Uh, so from there we're gonna head into Fanhina's gym. Uh, our first encounter with her. Uh, we actually end up losing, but our second encounter ends up a bit better. Our Apom will knock out the Duskull. Heracross will knock out the Haunter and then it's gonna be a team effort to knock out the Miss Magius. Uh, I have a Toxic on my Vespi Queen, but Vespi Queen goes down and then Heracross has to finish things up. Luckily I survive a side beam and knock it out with an aerial lace and we knock down Fantina and that is three gems down already. That's super easy. And from here we're gonna encounter our rival and our rival is gonna be a bit easier. We're gonna specifically train up our Apom uh, for no reason because the next gym is a fighting gym. So I don't know why I'm training up my A pump, but I have now an Ambi Pom on my team, and the next gym is a fighting gym. So there's no point of me having an Ambi Pom. Anyways, I'm focusing using my Vespi Queen on uh, the gym because Vespi Queen does have Gust as a move. So I'm gonna send up my Vespi Queen to start versus our Meditite. Ends up not doing well because it gets knocked out. <laughs> That's not good against melee. So Meditite knocks me out, and that's embarrassing because I've never seen a Meditite do any damage to anyone. Luckily for us, Ambipom cleans up the Meditite. Uh, Machoke comes out. I have a Heracross in the back with Aerial Lace, so there is no problem. It crits it, which is surprising. It knocks it out, and then Lucario comes out. Uh, I don't really have too much for Lucario. I decided you stay in and break break it. It ends up just destroying it. So Heracross too strong for this game. After we help Dawn with the Team Plasma situation, we're actually going to head into Pastoria City. Pastoria City will be home of Crasher Wake, the 5th gym of the game, and it's a water gym. And this is finally where Cherum of our team can be useful. And as in, it's not really useful at all, but like, we're going to pretend it's good. We're going to head into the Crasher Wake fight itself. Uh, we're going to start off with our Ambipom versus the Gyarados. Gyarados, I mean, we're just going to try to weaken down the Gyarados for us because Gyarados is kind of scary. I uh, sacrificed my Ambi Pump for a lot of chip damage, but that's fine with us. Set out my Vespi Queen to Power Gem the Gyarados down, and then his Floatzel will come out, so it's a bit of a struggle here. Heracross will actually come out. It has a move called Counter, so I could reverse the attack onto the Floatzel, and I do this twice and knocks out the Floatzel. So the biggest threat is knocked out pretty easily, and then Sharon could finally come out and shine. Sharon is a grass type on our team that is, I mean, from the honey trees. And Magical Leaf would actually knock out the Quagsire in two hits. Uh, I I would assume it would knock out in one hit, but you know, Sherem is not the best Pokemon you can get. I uh, crits it the second time and we knock it out and we beat Crash Awake. From there, we're gonna have to do a bit of chasing. We're gonna chase down the Team Galactic Grunt, then chase down the Psyducks, and then chase down Cynthia's Grandma. And then Cyrus challenges us, and this scary Pokemon called Merkle almost kills my entire team. So, I mean, we gotta watch out for that. 
and then we're gonna head into the bridge fire against our rival and we lose that as well so we're we're taking a lot of l's for no reason uh we come back and we knock out his infernate with my ambi palm and then from there we're gonna head into the steel gym of the game canal of city's gym uh we're gonna prioritize using our heracross a lot more and it's doing work it's destroying everything so once we head into byron so once we head into byron heracross giving heracross tm26 earthquake is actually the most useful thing because the first thing we got is knockout magneton and then the steelix will come out i decided to you just break break it down and it's dead it's dead it's gone uh so that's the best thing and then bastion comes out i thought bastion high defense was gonna like matter a lot more apparently it doesn't because heracross just destroys it in one hit and we beat byron so heracross is just eating <laughs> eating everyone's souls so once we've done that we're gonna head into lake valor to help and beat saturn uh it's our first encounter with saturn we beat saturn pretty convincingly and then we're headed into lake verity and then we beat up her ugly and mars in there and then we're gonna head into snowpoint city snowpoint city will be home of the snow gym and the seventh gym of the game unfortunately for that we're not gonna be staying here for too long we're gonna destroy it easily super easily we're gonna destroy it so we're gonna start off the battle with our heracross we're gonna knock out the sneezo sneezo does a large chunk to our hp so i'm like oh well that's not a good sign her second pokemon would be frostless and frostless will actually be a danger to my team so i decided to send out my best queen and best queen has a new move called destiny bond so i live blizzard and destiny bond the frostless and then the frostless hits me again knocks it out and destiny bond will bond our souls together and knock down the frostless so we can take care of the threat right there and i sent out my hair across we'll clean up the obama snow when one hit and also clean up the palace wine in one hit and that is free we are cheesing through the game right now uh, it's so it's so nice having a destiny bond pokemon because it just takes care of a threat uh, unfortunately it doesn't give me xp so i can't really train it that way but uh if i put i mean an xp share on it's gonna be pretty easy to train up so we're gonna head into the team collective hideout and we're gonna fight against cyrus for the second time cyrus will have a dangerous dangerous looking team i will not lie uh, so we start out the fight against uh, sneezo and then we beat the sneezo next up will be his crowbat so i decided to use destiny bond that because it seemed like the biggest threat so it's gonna knock me out and i'm gonna destiny bond that and it'll go down unfortunately his final pokemon will be Hans crow and Hans crow would actually knock me all the way down so i have to return and find a solution for this so ambi palm can actually survive a hit so i screech it and then follow it up with a double hit now double hit is a roll to knock it out but luckily i crit it and actually beat the Hans crow and we are done with Cyrus for that. Cyrus is getting scarier. And Saturn, I mean, we knock out Saturn pretty easily. <laughs> but from there, we're going to actually head into Mount Coronet. And Mount Coronet will be home of, obviously, the Spear Pillar. And where Team Galactic's goal is, we're going to do the double battle fight with Mars and Jupiter. Because you know what, Saturn, you know, Saturn's irrelevant. Then we're going to do the Distortion World Puzzle, all that, very quickly. Then we're going to head into the final Cyrus fight of the game. Uh, he's gonna start with his Houndoom. I'm gonna knock out his Houndoom in one hit with my Heracross. Close combat. Next Pokemon will be his Crobat. I decided to use my Ambipom against it. Ambipom uh, cleanly knocks out the Crobat easily. And then the Gyarados comes out. Uh, it's a team effort to knock out the Gyarados. I stun Spore with my Beautifly. Uh, and then my Charon comes out. Solo beams it slowly down. And then finally, uh, I'll send out my Ambipom to knock out the Gyarados. Next up will be Honcho. Honcho comes out. And I'm a Destiny Bond that I live a drill pack easily, as in uh, very, very slightly. But then I knock it out with a Destiny Bond, and then the threat is down. And Weavile comes out, Ambi Palm. I mean, I sacrifice my Ambi Palm first to get the chip damage off necessary, and then Heracross. I send out my Heracross. And the only way, the only way Cyrus can beat me is to freeze me, and it does freeze me, and I lose because of that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I have to restart from there, and then fight against his stupid weavile and then i knock out it i knock it out in one hit and it's dead so i mean <laughs> so annoying <laughs> but then we're gonna head into sunny shore city uh, it will be home of the eighth gym the electric gym of the game uh i have earthquake and close combat on my hair cross so i was cheesing through the entire gym easily so once we head into Wagner, unfortunately i earthquake my first pokemon which is jotun so i'm like okay this should be easy then i earthquake the luxury and then it actually lives and knocks me to 2 HP with a fire thing, but burns me, so I die. And I'm like, 
that's not exactly what I want <laughs> to see. So, I mean, Luxury is facing against my Ambipom. Ambipom will knock that out. Raichu comes out, and I'm like, oof, this better be taken care of. Uh, Return knocks, doesn't knock it out, barely at one hit, so I have to double hit it. It barely still doesn't kill it, so I send out my Cherum, and it ends up doing a lot to my Cherum as well. And I Leech Seed it and knock it out. From there, uh, the Electivar comes out, but I'm going to send out my best between Destiny, Bonnet, soul bond it and then i'm gonna knock it i'm gonna knock myself out with him and then that is done with Faulkner. so we get eight gym badges pretty easily pretty cheesing and then now we're gonna head into the leaf four of course not before we do a bit of training to get our pokemon you know decently high level because these are bug types for most of it so they're not the strongest uh but we're gonna head into our final rival battle fight which is again sperry uh, Barry's getting. I have a warm dam now. I caught a Burmy and trained up to a warm dam. I'd rather have a warm dam than a muffin. So uh, I chose. Uh, I chose sand. I chose sand. Uh, the sand form because it's better. Uh, but from there, I'm actually getting uh, get destroyed slowly by the Star Raptor. But we pull through, and we end up not beating the Star Raptor <laughs> with our debut warm dam. But uh, our Ambi Palm will obviously have a new move. It has a new move called Thief and U turn. So it's gonna be you know pretty uh, pretty useful. Uh, on that sense, uh, I'm going to U-turn out against the Heracross and then send in my Beautify. Take the close combat easily. Sunspore, I mean, then I'm going to get knocked out. But then I send my MB Palm again. Knock out the Heracross in one hit or two hits, double hit. Uh, then the Infernoid comes out and I decide to use my Best Bee Queen because Best Bee Queen is a one-trip pony. And Destiny Bonds it and then knocks itself out with the Infernape. So the threat is down and we are clear to go. Floatzel comes out. I missed two. I missed two double hits. I could knock it out easily, but it doesn't. And then a Snorlax comes out. I double hit it down. Uh, it doesn't kill it, so my Heracross will come out and finish the job. And then finally, his Roserate will actually meet the Maker. Heracross's strongest move, Mega Horn, into the face, and the Roserate goes down. And so that's a strong showing from my team with our first fight together. So we're gonna head into the first Elite Four member, Aaron. Aaron will be, you know. The bug type elite form member. He's gonna start out with a Yon Mega. He's gonna double team in my Warm Dam's face. All I need to do is hit with Rock or with Rock Blash, and I end up hitting it once, but I only got two hits. So I'm like, wow. Uh, luckily, it heals up, and I hit it again, and three hits will knock it out. And so Drapion will come out next. Drapion versus my Heracross. It actually lives in an Earthquake, which is unfortunate. And then Aerial releases me, but it doesn't do enough to where it's you know a dangerous amount. So two Earthquakes will knock it out. Uh, his following Pokemon will be his own Heracross. I decided to double hit it with my Ambipom for no reason. I assumed it was going to full restore it, so I, I thought it was going to I thought it was going to be at full HP. I decided to use Fissure. It hits. I mean, it hits. I mean, Fissure hits, so why not? And then the Vespi Queen comes out, and I got to send out my Heracross because Heracross has another new move called Stone Edge. Stone Edge will actually knock it out, and that is done for that. And then Scissor comes out. Scissor is a pretty big threat. I sent out my Vespi Queen trying to trap it, but it just doesn't do enough damage, so, so Destiny Bomb was a waste of time. My hair across, then close combat would knock it out super easily. So, I mean, it, it, was a, it, was a dumb, it was a dumb move for me to use Destiny Bomb for no reason. So Beautify finally gets a time to shine when we fight against Burfa. Burfa will be the second Elite Four member of the game, and it will be specialized in ground-type Pokemon. So, I mean, Giga Drain will knock out the Wish Cash, Giga Drain will knock out the Golem, Giga Drain crits the Rhyperior and knocks it out. And then the next Pokemon will be Glitzcore. I decided not to use. I decided not to use Destiny Bond. I decided to use Toxic and install it out. However, um, I even thought out like Frozen like multiple times. However, however, the problem is we end up having the same fate where we both get knocked out at the same time and we don't get XP. And then Hippodon gets Giga Drain down once, knocks out my beautiful fight. But then you no know, Sharon gets to uh, show up and Solar Beams down to Hippodon. Next will be Flint of the Elite Four, which is the third Elite Four member, which is a fire type Elite Four member. I set out my Heracross first, Houndoom versus Heracross. Uh, it knocks out the Houndoom very easy. Flareon decides to come out next. I mean, I don't know what it was trying to do because Earthquake will obviously knock it out as well. And then, I mean, I don't know what Flint's trying to do. He sends out a Rapidash. I'm sending out my Worm Dam. Uh, Worm Dam will actually knock out the Rapidash. Finally, finally, it does something useful. Uh, and then Magmortar comes out. I wasn't going to risk it against the Magmortar, so I sent out my best Speed Queen. I'm going to Destiny Bond this for sure. And then, you know, it, ta it takes down the Magmortar. And then finally, and then finally, his Infernate will get knocked down in one hit against 
my Heracross. So that is a pretty clean sweep. We destroyed him pretty well. And next up will be Lucian. Lucian's always giving me trouble. And it's very annoying how he's so strong. But this team of mine is actually decently good. So I'm going to send out my Ambipom to start. Mr. Mime gets one shot with my U-turn. And then I'm going to start just spamming this. So I send out my Beautify. He's going to send out his Gallade next. I'm going to return back into my Ambipom so I could return out. Uh, just to gauge uh, what it's wanted to do. It's always going to try to use Drain Punch against me. So... Uh, the best case of action is actually to send out my Vespi Queen and try to Destiny Bond it. However, it catches me with a Stone Edge and knocks me out. Then from there, I'm going to U-turn. I gauge damage again and then sacrifice my Sharon for this. And then finally hit it with a double hit and knock out the Gallade. Next up is Alakazam. Poor Alakazam. I'm a few levels higher than it and I'll speed it. U-turn will knock it out very cleanly. And then next Pokemon will be his Espeon. So Espeon will you know, get hit with a U-turn. And then I send out my Beautifly. Uh, Beautifly will take a Psychic decently well. I mean, decently well. It's getting forward store up. And then I use Silverwind. However, Silverwind gets me the boost. So, Beautifly gets another KO list. And, I mean, this thing is a monster, technically. I mean, if you put it on the kill chart, it's up there. I mean, it's got a lot of kills. So, I mean, next will be Bronzong. I could have used Morning Sun and then knock it out with two Silverwinds. But, you know, I wasn't trying to do this. I was just trying to uh, finish the fight. As fast as I can, and I end up beating the Bronze Song. And now I'm gonna head into the Cynthia fight pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna send out my Ambipom first against Cynthia, and then then send out my Cherim. I'm gonna sacrifice my Cherim for a little bit of damage, as in putting Leech Seed on it. And then I'm gonna send out my uh, so uh, Spirit Tune will get Toxic Stall down, and I get Heal up very easily. And then uh, I'm gonna send out my Ambipom versus his Togekiss. Uh, it's gonna actually end up pretty well for me. I flinch it because I have a Razor Fang on. I went back and got some hell items. Uh, it flinches, so I get to double hit it again and knock out the Togekiss. Lucario will be sent out by Cynthia next, so I send out my Heracross. Heracross with Alk Speed and close combat at it, knock it out. And then the Molotov comes out. I decided to use my Ampipon since it's full HP. I double hit it, it flinches. Oh my god. And then I double hit it again and knock it out. And then you know, just to, I mean, I don't need to do this, but, you know, just uh, just for old time's sakes, one more time, I decided to use Destiny Bond on my on my Vespi Queen, and then Gladden again knocked out by the Guard Chomp, and then knock out the Guard Chomp very easily, and then the final Pokemon will be her Rose Rate. I knock it out, uh, Ambipon comes out, double hits it, just knock it out. <laughs> just two hits with a double hit and knock it out, and that is it. That is the end. Of the challenge i hope you guys all enjoyed don't forget to leave a like comment down below some challenge ideas and also subscribe thank you guys thank you everyone who made it this far into the video i hope you guys all enjoy uh this was a fun video to make and thank you for suggesting it in the comments my name is alpha hope you guys all had a great day and i'm out peace